So, Ronnie Caswell, of course, is a, a politician. No. <laughs> he was Minister for Intelligence Services from April 2004 to September 2008. He was a member of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress from 1987 to 2007, as well as a member of the Central Committee of the South African Communist Party from December 1986 to 2007. Mm. Of course, Ronnie was very active in the South African government and in South African mm. politics at a very crucial time in South Africa's history. It was the moment when the, Africa, when the African National, National Congress actually turned away from nationalization as a policy option for them. So what Ronnie's going to do is take us back in time, in history, talk about how that decision came to be so we understand why we are where we are today. And then he's also going to talk a little bit about some models which appeal to him, which we could consider going forward in South Africa. Thanks so much for both Saxis and Frederick Ebert for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here. This is an, a very important <laughs> topic. Uh, and I might just, if I remember, take a minute off to say how people like ourselves, who are basically the middle class, better offs. Um, I don't like the word intellectual. It's very overplayed in South Africa. Um, I don't think there are that many intellectuals in South Africa. <laughs> but the people who are interested, whether academic researchers, uh, people who are involved in the political aspects of our life, um, we, we need to, to, to link this with the working people of our country. It's absolutely vital. And I know the academics I know are in a very, very good crop in our country. And it's excellent to see so many emerging, focusing on the issues that Frederick Edward and Saxis have focused on today. It's a very, very positive aspect. And we must all play a role in bringing the intellectual aspects with the working class and the masses generally. The ANC's history post-Freedom Charter with our trade union movement, which was sacked to at the time, and our Communist Party. Key thing is it's not simply coming out of colonial uh, status and becoming an independent state uh, and having your political power is the political power is extremely important. Without it, what can you do? And that's what took over for us in South Africa. We were just amazed. We probably, probably couldn't really believe it, that it come about in the end without civil war, without that armed insurrection of our people, etc. cetera. Um, and Mandela comes out of uh, prison, and Cyril Ramaphosa is introducing him at the parade in Cape Town. He used the word nationalization. And he said, we are still committed to nationalization as per the Freedom Charter. February 1990. He goes to Davos at the beginning of 1992 and comes back and he tells us all, I'm at the meeting, and he says, uh, right, you know, I've been there and I've met the heads of these various countries and powers and we've had sessions with the key investors internationally as well as you know our business people in South Africa which had been well underway with Oppenheimer and Rupert and everybody else like that and he said uh, guys it's absolutely clear we if we go ahead with the radical socialist measures, we are going to find ourselves as isolated as Cuba. We've seen the Soviet Union collapse. We need foreign investment for growth, the mantra of the IMF and neoliberalism, of course, as though there's no other way. And again, Latin America is showing that there is through the domestic way through this. Um, and on this basis, we've got to change tack. But he puts this thing in quite a mild way. He's a very canny politician. He knows what he wants. And the rest of us 
are still absolutely dazzled with this prospect that we're going to come to power because we're going to get through the negotiations. It's absolutely correct that we've got to be very careful and we've got to appeal for reconciliation and we've got to neutralize the aggressive rightists in this country and spare the bloodshed. Who disagrees with that? I don't to this day. It is a wonderful achievement of the old man's. And it was he who led that already from prison. Um, and you could also rationalize and say that in our minds, was then this two-stage project, which was absolutely at the base of the Communist Party, always attacked by people to the left, or in, in some words, I hate these, 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 uh, um, these, these labels, Trotsky, Stalinist, etc., because it's, it's just uh, sometimes smearing people. But um, these particular groups, and uh, it, it's, a, a question then of, you know, it's actually, we might not agree quite with the way the old man's putting it, um, but the time will come. We get that political power, and when you've got political power, you can do so much. And of course, this happens in 1994, and as we were never in doubt that we would get 65, 70% of the vote of the people of this country for the various reasons of having led the liberation struggle and so on. And the ANC's policy and its freedom charter and so on. And South Africa belongs to all who live in it. But things happen when you come into political power and you haven't got control of the economic levers. And there's the word hegemony we all know that means in the domination in terms of ideas and over policy and leading with the ideas, etc. And we in a capitalist country uh, with our people at every level infected with this, including those who are coming out of prison and those from exile. Uh, but you've got these captains of industry who are now small in number as they are internationally, but having such reach, such influence through the media, through education, through an intelligentsia, um, and backed up internationally. And in that situation, the Soviet Union has now been disappeared. Uh, and I'm not saying that is the font of of, of socialism, but certainly what we had seen in Eastern Europe in its um, crude, crude way and, and errors was a movement away from capital control, even if the statist element is such a key aspect. And I would say in this period, what we've seen whittling, whittling away and removing from people's minds is the question of socialism and what it actually means and that it's passe and with it nationalism, na sorry, nationalization. So it becomes the swear word. And every time someone puts their head above the parapet or wants to argue the toss in the media or, or, or wherever, uh, for one good strong uh, worker or academic or revolutionary, you've got a ton of bricks that are being offloaded on that person and he or she is blown out of the water virtually. So it's a small groupings in our country who are courageously keeping that flag flying and are doing the research and bringing it to the fore. Um, in the process, what I call the Faustian Pact, is where I disagree. How much time have I got now? Just You've prog got me. about 10 minutes. 10, oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, so I termed the process in our country a Faustian pact. So I, I take it everybody here, especially the Germans, know and understand Faust. But for those who don't, Faust is intellectual, he's uh, very ambitious, he can do many things, but his ambition is so great that he wants more power, more glory, 
etc. And the devil does a deal with Faust and says, okay, I'll give you everything you want, but in return you give me your soul. And I've got the right to come and take your soul from me whenever I want. So that's the Faustian pact. In other words, you do a deal with the devil. So you gain something, but in return you sell yourself. The word sellout comes to the mind. Um, some Peter Blanche has done a marvelous book, uh, Lost in Transition which is a brilliant economic treatise on what's happened. South Africa's mining, energy complex, what's happened in terms of gold and diamonds 140 and 120 years on, where we haven't benefited, uh, the, the workers least of all, in terms of the wealth and the platinum and the chrome and everything as it stands is just going to flow out of our country. And little scraps will help. And, and, and do something here, yeah, very, very little. Um, so the Faustian pact then for me is not just Mandela or Thabo Mbeki or, and, and not just Jacob Zuma is now, he's a prisoner of that. And of course he loves it uh, given the corrupt factors and, and, and the way he needed that in terms of his own self-enrichment more than an Mbeki in that sense, or a Mandela. And of the three, Mbeki, the least of the three, interested in money. The least. Because Madiba was with his trust, etc., etc. Okay. And I also will accept an argument that says, no, well, Mbeki or an intellectual like him is corrupt if their ideas become corrupted. So understand me. I'm talking about real blatant hand in your pocket, Wives in your beds, children being looked after, and Count Legate and Guptas, etc. I mean, that has become such a parody, so much more objectionable than anything of the Mbeki era. As much as Mbeki clearly, as Madiba's right hand person, is putting ideas to Madiba, which Madiba wants. Madiba's never been a puppet. There's no one who could just play him like that. There are people who knew that you put ideas to Madiba, and if they were ones that he liked, he could really take them up. Which is why when he was in divorce, what was then said to him was very appealing. People say he was a member of the Communist Party, blah, 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 that's another debate. He was never a socialist, Madiba. So you then come to this particular position then of falling in with the idea that we will take the political control and then we're going to use those levers in a gradual way because we don't want to become isolated um, and we, we don't want to be attacked. Uh, we're weak, which I take issue with because I believe we were at our strongest. We were at the apogee of our strength post-1990-94 with the trade unions, with the unity, with people clear in their minds about socialism, there was strong discipline, etc., etc. And I think that with the Madiba icon, with the world anti-apartheid movement on our side, the black American, African American lobby is full square with us. That if somebody like Madiba in 1994 had said, we are going for social democratic, let's, let's say that, um, for a socialist development. We are not going to take up the ideas of the World Bank and the IMF and the Clintons and the Thatchers, etc. We're going to look to our people. We're going to build the economy here. We're not going to simply see growth from foreign direct invention, in, uh, investment, uh, investment a, as the key way. Who do what the Latin Americans are showing us today. Um, that you focus in on your people, on your home market, and do the things in terms of your wealth. That you come to the Norwegian factor, where in 1960, in the lake between Scotland and Norway, huge reserves of oil and gas, and the Brits go the path of the privatization you referred to. And what do they get out of that, the British people? It's a 1% who have really benefited. The Norwegians, they go for social democracy and they set up a sovereign oil fund 
and I'm not 100%, I think it's one third, it is one third of their GDP, year after year after year. One third of the GDP comes from that sovereign fund, whereby it's private-public partnership. They've given the, to, to the private sector the development of these fields, etc. But they pay royalties huge, like 50% into the sovereign fund. And there's strategic direction from the Norwegian government. So the Norwegians are sitting so comfortably, the population, in terms of what that fund can do, that wealth from the oil can do, in terms of their hospitals, their education, their clinics, their infrastructure, their roads, etc. We have had 140 years of gold exploitation and one, of, of diamonds, 120 of gold. How many more of platinum and chrome and manganese going out? going out. And the ANC loves to play paper games. So it um, has passed an act, which is the um, Mineral and Petroleum Development Act, where the, the, the mineral wealth is placed in custodianship of our government for the benefit of our people. How have our people benefited? You tell me. What has happened to that? It's again this kind of paper stuff, trying to to, to, to you moving right, but you signal left and you do nothing about it. And then our friend Jeremy Cronin, who's become this is the, the, the main scribe for Blade and Zamundi, once an intellectual, now utterly lazy. So Jeremy does all the writing. And he goes on in Umsa Benzi about this wonderful development. He's accepting that that uh, Mineral Development Act is not really getting anywhere. So for the Mangong, uh, a conference. They put up a state intervention in, in the mining sector, a SIMS document, which is about a sovereign wealth fund uh, for mining and heavy taxation, etc. And he says it's all been lost in the cacophony because people are talking about Gupta Gates and Kantler and the elections, etc. And my question is, are they really serious? What's happening with that? because it's a sham as far as I can see. That my experience of a party I've been in since 1960 or associated with is in this Faustian pact. There's the sham and it's seen in the legislation that, that Minerals Development Act goes in the Mbeki period. Um, we're not and we don't have the guts to do what uh, Bolivia, what little Ecuador, what Venezuela has been able to do. Um, and be prepared then to face up to the middle class and the wealthy of our country. And I don't want to go to, to war with the middle class. I, I, I want us to take up issue with the 1% of this country and internationally. And if we're able to be transparent and explain things properly and say to the middle class of this country, who are jittery as hell with the red berets, with crime and everything else, and explain and say up front that you don't go to bed safely in your mind at night. You are jittery all the time, and it's simply because we are not assisting the poor of our country, as Madiba once said we would. And when we can do that, we'll make it South Africa. We take control of the resources of our country for the benefit of the people. And we, we then will create a much more harmonious society and real reconciliation with that, not a phony reconciliation in terms of this. So perhaps I've run out of time yes. now. Maybe I should stop at that point. Okay.